morning children. Hope everybody is having a wonderful day. Come, join me this time, face and worship. One, two, three, go. <laughs>
I am yours forever yours there is a king before the scars of healing there is a son who came in grace and truth how great Welcome to Cheer Ministry Online Lesson. My name is Teacher Tim Tio, and today we'll be learning about the parable of the fig tree. But before that, let's say a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you for today and this wonderful morning. I pray as I'm going to talk about the parable of the fig tree, I pray that you would use me as a vessel to say the words and the points that you want me to say. I pray that after this, Lord, your message will be able to touch the hearts of many children and will turn them back to you. In this I pray, Amen. Before we start, let's talk about the meaning of a parable. The parable is a story that has important lessons or principle to take note of. With that said, let's start our lesson. What is a parable? A parable is a simple story taught by Jesus. Our lesson for today is the parable of the fig tree. It's a story spoken by Jesus that we can find in Luke 13 verse 6 to 9. So Jesus began to tell this parable. A man had a fig tree which had been planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and did not find any. And he said to the vineyard keeper, Behold, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree without finding any. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? 
And he answered and said to him, Let it alone, sir. For this year too, I will dig around it and put in fertilizer. And if it bears fruits next year, fine. If but if not, cut it down. Let's break down this parable. In this parable, who is the vineyard owner? In Isaiah 5 verse 7, it is said that the vineyard of the Lord Almighty. So in this verse, we now know that God is the rightful owner over us and the world. Moving on, who is the vineyard keeper? Well, the vineyard keeper would be Jesus and God. Why God? We will find out in a while. Now, who is the vineyard? Going back to Isaiah 5 verse 7, the vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the nation of Israel and the people of Judah. So now we know that we Christians are God's and Jesus' vineyard. Well, if one tree, if one vineyard is all Christians in the world, what does one tree represent? You know it. One tree means one Christian believer. So if that tree does not bear fruit, in the end, God will cut it down. Now, what does God want? Now, He wants us to bear fruit. We can look at Galatians 5 verse 22 to 23. The but the fruit of Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now we know what fruit we need to bear, but why do we need to bear fruit and how to do so? So we have already talked about the vineyard owner and who is the keeper. We also already talked about who is the vineyard and what does one fig tree represent. We also learned about what does God wants with us Christians. Now we do not know why do we need to be fruitful. To do this, we first need to dive into the world of farming, just basic farming. So one thing that farmer does when they realize their fruit their fruit trees are no longer bearing fruits, they will chop down and cut down parts of it to make to make way for new branches to grow through. And if it doesn't if that doesn't help, they will cut down the whole tree because it will leach nutrients from other plants and at the same time take up a soil space for newer plants to be plant to be brought in. If you bring this into biblical terms, it means whoever is not bearing the fruit of the spirit are bad influence on the fruit bearing ones. This also means the non fruit bearing Christians will be cut down since they are taking God's aid for granted. So how can you prevent getting chopped down from God? To prevent us from getting chopped down by God, we need to do four things quickly and without hesitating. First is repenting. repenting. Repent all your sins, all of your mistakes and everything. Do daily personal devotions with God. After that, you can uh, take down notes that um, speaks out to you and then Spend like 5 or 10 minutes to talk to God. Third thing to do is start by walking with God. As in, in everything you do, every test you face, every trial you go through. Before you go through that and you feel anxious or anything, just uh, say a short prayer that you want Him to walk with you and you put Him in the center of everything. Center of your school works, your um, assignments, and so on. Fourth one is start bearing the fruit of the Spirit. Like I have said before, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and also self-control. The next part of my lesson is titled, Time is Running Out. So the vineyard owner had been waiting for four years for the, for the fig tree to bear fruits. As for you and I, we don't know which year are we in. Are we in our first year or the third year? Which is why we cannot delay not bearing fruit and must start doing it now. Good thing we have help. So remember how I said God 
is the vineyard keeper as well. Here we can see how God is helping us to grow. Now, as much as God's patience is indeed limited, fortunately, God understands our struggle and doesn't expect us to bear fruit overnight or in two days. He and Jesus are always adding fertilizers and nutrients into our spiritual life, giving us more and more time to repent, grow and bear fruits for Him, aiding us in our time of temptation, storms and tests in life. Besides venturing on this journey by ourselves, we can also do it with the help of our friends. In Hebrew 10 verse 24 to 25, spur means to motivate one another. Like Paul said, we may need to motivate one another towards love and good deeds. We are also tasked to maintain each other on the fruit-bearing path to God's free kingdom, to aid and help each other to bear fruits, remind each other to bear fruits and also be accountable. So now we have to make use of the time and God's grace. So instead of delaying time to start bearing fruit, why don't we start now? God gave us His wisdom, grace, mercy, patience and also aid. We can find all of this through the Bible and also prayer. If you are encountering a difficult situation or a test or a storm in life, you can always kneel down, submit yourself to God, submit everything to God and pray for His wisdom, grace and also aid. Trust me when I say this, he would actually give all of his aid to you and then carry you to the finishing line. So I've reached the summary of the, this week's lesson. The question for this week is, what is repentance? Repentance means to stop breaking the law of God and, to, and begin to obey God's law. It means to change our bad behavior, to stop doing something that's not productive, or that is taking us in the wrong direction. Instead, we can pray and ask God's forgiveness and guidance to guide us back to His path that leads to Him. After watching this video, ask yourself these three questions. As a human and as a child of God, are you producing fruit? Are you living as a part of a bigger, overarching purpose? And what is your purpose in breeding, eating food and taking up space on this earth? The last point for repentance that I want to say is that it is necessary for us to for us to grow and is possible with God's help. God is patient and grants us time to change and bear fruit. Yet we don't know when he's going to chop us down. All right, so this is the end of this lesson and today I will be opening up an altar call. Here's a chance for you to get redeemed and be on the right track with God. So if you want to get redeemed, follow this. Follow me on this prayer. Dear God, I admit that I am a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, who died on the cross for my sins and was buried, was raised to life again after three days. I ask for your forgiveness of my sin. God, help me to grow more like you each day and, to in and I want to invite Jesus Christ into my heart as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Hi children, so this is the end of this week's lesson. Let's end today's lesson in a prayer. Heavenly Father Heaven, thank you for today. Thank you for this one wonderful weekend. Lord, Lord I pray as we, we learn more about the parable of the fig tree. Lord, I pray that you will sow the fruits of the Spirit into our life and to the life of the children's life. In this I pray, Amen. Alright, see you soon. Bye.